Now here's an interesting piece of art, and the reason I'm showing you this, which is figure 79 in the Gombrich text, is called encaustic. This is a pigmented wax on wood. And the interesting thing about this is that, first of all, you could probably recognize this person based on this picture. Now why is this picture shaped so funny? And what's the purpose? Why is this darkening occur here? Well, actually, this was a later adaptation of art to a funerary practice in Egypt. What's going on here is these are pictures that were on this type of a mummy above the face of the person who's wrapped up there. There's a town named Fayum in Egypt. This was a popular thing around the end of the first century. Some of these mummies became quite elaborate. It almost looks like this is gold, gold leaf applied here. But think about this. A likeness like this probably was very close to the way this person looked. And it's almost a little eerie that they're looking out at you in the position where their face would be on their mummy. You might find a person even today who looked somewhat like that in the same culture. But this person died almost 2,000 years ago. And it's very interesting that looking out from the past, we see this person in a rather thoughtful position. When were these created? Well, they were probably created when the person was still alive, obviously. He might look quite different than this when he was dead. So people might have prepared for their death in this way and just sort of had it at the ready. Who knows when that might have occurred. Looks like this person was rather young when he died. Here's an example of weaving. And the reason we're taking a look at this is this uses dyed yarn. What does dyed mean? Well, you could make up a colorful liquid and you can use that liquid to impart color to cloth either cloth that's made from animal fibers or cloth that's made from plant fibers. And in this case, we see blue yarn, yellow yarn, red yarn, and some other type of a lighter brownish sort of a yarn here. That yarn woven into a backing of some kind of a coarse fiber, almost like a rug might be made. So we'll be talking in the next unit about dyes. What are dyes and how are they related to pigments? And can you take a coloring fluid dye and make it into a pigment so that you might also have something of the same color as a paint. Interesting. We'll be taking a look at that process too. Lastly, this is a picture of a, a shell. You can see a little creature kind of creeping out of it here. A murex sea creature, a little kind of a snail, was exploited by ancients to make the color purple as a dye. It turns out that if you take a number of these things and you pull out their flesh and you boil it up in a certain way, you can get a liquid out of it that will produce a very rich purple color. But it's very expensive because thousands and thousands of these would have to be processed in order to create a batch of dye to dye cloth purple. In ancient times, especially in the Roman Empire, purple was limited to being worn by royalty or the emperor. And it was a crime punishable by death to wear something purple because you'd be impersonating a royal person. And it was entirely inappropriate to do that. Now, today we can find dyes of any color and they're very inexpensive. But in ancient times, just like with certain pigment and colorant sources, dyes, some of them were very expensive. Remember the things we talked about in terms of colorants. What are two characteristics of them? One of them is their color fastness. How much would they fade in the sunlight? And another one was their toxicity. Obviously, for something worn close to the skin, you would not want to use a very toxic substance. And the color fastness, is that important or not? It's less important in clothing, which is going to wear out fairly quickly anyway. So color fastness is less important in clothing than it might be in paintings, which were intended to last much longer time. And that's the end of the slides for Chapter 5.